right, greetings everybody. As you see, Aaron is behind the scenes getting ready to get started for Small Business Saturdays. This is dedication live from Jack. We've got Aaron Montgomery and me, Eric Campbell, guest hosting while he gets things set up because we've got a lot of buttons to push. But we are here live from the Jack Show in Kansas City. And we're going to talk a little bit about business and decoration as we usually do. And Aaron's going to have some insights also from his classes and the things that are going on now. So I'm really happy that we get to kind of multi-stream this to all the different places that we usually share our content. But uh, shortly we'll have him on as well to get things rocking. But let's get rolling, man. Let's do it. Welcome to, Small Welcome to Small Business Saturday's video series with your host and my husband. And my dad, Aaron Montgomery. Join the conversation. Let's talk some business. <laughs> awesome. All right. Good morning. Welcome, Eric. How are you this morning? Uh, doing fine. Doing fine. I mean, always a good time to be at Dax. So uh, happy to be here this morning. Yeah, definitely. So uh, let's let's just dive right in. We've got some folks checking out. We're... we're uh, Trying to do something a little bit different, so we got the comments over in front of us here this morning. So uh, yeah. Sandy says good morning. Good morning, Sandy. Jane, howdy from Houston. And, uh, hey, Jane. Uh, awesome. Martha checking in. Uh, let's see, Cindy and. Oh, it's Cindy. Always, <laughs> always viewing. And you, Cindy. Emma, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so good stuff. Uh, <laughs> after that intro, you need a dad joke. Um, <laughs> yeah. That do you have a good one, Eric? I really don't, okay. but All right. not being a dad, I don't have a dad joke. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll text my son right now and say, I need a dad joke. Oh, in fact, that, there's my wife checking in. Good Kylene, uh, ask Lewis for a dad joke, please. And uh, <laughs> we will go from there. Yeah. So, sir, welcome to day two of Dax, Kansas City. I'm trying to remember what city I'm in right now. Because <laughs> I am Terry Combs style, you know, uh, yeah. traveling nine straight days, uh, airport to airport. So uh, same here. We're both getting straight from here to Threat X. Yeah. Yeah. But for right now, we got to keep focus on the awesomeness that's happening on day two <laughs> at DAX because there's still a lot going on. Show floor is busy. Equipment is being sold and showed. And people are still <laughs> talking about all sorts of awesome decorating information and business. Yeah. Yeah. And day two at the DAX show since it's a two day show. Yeah. Day two is definitely the let's let's make a deal, so to yeah, speak. Yeah. This is where <laughs> business is done. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Everybody, you know, has had a great show, had an opportunity to show off lots of cool stuff. Yeah. Things happening, uh, things going on. But uh, as an exhibitor, as a past exhibitor that yeah. sold equipment yeah. and things like that, you don't want to take it home. No, nobody wants to take it home. So if you were going to make that decision, guys, make your decision today. Go, if, go ask them now. Exactly. If you're <laughs> if you're able to roll that equipment out the door instead of packing it onto uh, <laughs> something, then yeah, uh, yeah, going from there. Yeah, everybody's into that. So, Definitely. Yeah, if, you're, if you drive through that shows, drive away with equipment. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ah, good morning, James. How are you, good sir? Morning, Hi, <laughs> James Erdolani, Everybody. Very awesome. <laughs> He's getting some pictures for us. That's very so, cool. Great. Yeah, yeah, we we are here. We are so here. that's why we do this video thing, so we can uh, prove we're here. <laughs> James, good to see you. Good morning, everybody. James Orlani. Orlani, legendary. Yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Thanks James. Stopping by. <laughs> that when we're doing it from the trade show floor, that is how you do, guys. It that's right. Live. All right, here we go. I've got the I've got the oh, dad, dad joke, joke Cindy, and we'll All get right. this done. <laughs> this is one of my favorites from Lewis. Why don't eggs tell jokes? They'll crack each other up. But wow, bump. I can actually groan in person this <laughs> You're time. You're groan in person. Oh. Oh, good, <laughs> good one, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Excellent. Thank you, Lewis. Love yeah. you, buddy. All right, Eric. Well, let, let's, like you said, let's talk about the awesomeness yeah, of, of DAX. You actually had a education opportunity the day before the show started. Yeah. So let's start there. That was the, okay. the okay. first, I think, probably the first official yeah, event of the show. Well, no, so. actually, I was second the day because I want to make sure I give a shout out to uh, Katie Woman from okay. Trouble Me Not Embroidery. She actually did a really big embroidery seminar first half of the day. And then the second half of the day, I took over with debating digitizing, which some of you may have already heard about, uh, where I talked about whether or not you should bring digitizing in house. And I snuck in some business stuff that you're going to like because <laughs> I, I really got I love this it. idea that anything that opens you up to more opportunity or that makes you more profitable is a valid 
answer, even if it's not the answer I would always give. So, yeah. you know, really, I, I think that's one of those things like I love digitizing. I, I even do it as a hobby when I shouldn't do it. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's that's commitment. <laughs> but at the same time, I know it's not always the most proper way. So I, it, that's what we really taught was the nuts and bolts of digitizing, the difficulties thereof, how yeah. it gets done. And then I stopped with, hey, why don't we talk about actual value, perceived value and how we make more profit in business? Wonderful. And I want to sneak that in there. Yeah under the tech community. yeah and what, what was what were some of the uh, reactions to that what was the feedback that you were uh, getting from that and what were the questions that were being asked you know funny enough some of the questions that are always asked are about tools and what i actually had to do and this was in the in the, the slide deck as well as off on the yeah. floor was say tools aren't the most important thing whatsoever the skills are uh -huh. the knowledge of the medium is more important than the tools and i don't know i mean i think it's not quite like everything else. When you're talking about the software, most of the software is pretty uh, complete, pretty feature complete. Sure. It does what it needs to do. It's more about your investment and how much you're doing there. Whereas I think, and you can answer this, we're talking about like sublimation printing, stuff like yeah. that. The equipment is super important. Isn't nice. It? Well, let, let's trade mics for one second here. Okay, sure. Getting some feedback that you're oh, okay. a little hard to hear. So I think this one might be here. Try that one. <laughs> All right. Let me, okay. Yeah, it's a little louder. Uh, I'll also make sure and get up on the mic because I'm not always great at the hand mics, but yeah. Uh, I think the way to talk about this really is to say people tend to focus on digitizing because they want to make a design that they see in their mind. And then they focus on the software tools when what they need to soft, uh, focus on is the actual skills, the yeah. understanding of the medium, but that I'm not sure that's the case with every decorating medium. And I think sure. like sublimation and printing, you have to be a little more careful about some of your tools, I yeah. think, but yeah. software may be the same kind of thing. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, cool. So that was that was the day before. That was the day before. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and honestly, there was a lot of reaction to the profit thing. Uh, people were kind of shocked that I got up as an in-house digitizer and said, you might not need to be an in-house digitizer, have one. It said, work on your business, not in it. Okay, that's great. But at the same time, I think it, it kind of dawned on some people where it's like, there's no one right way to get your design sourced. Excellent. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Great. So yeah. then, then Eric, what... Uh, Day day one started and yeah. uh, you were uh, seminaring right away. I yeah, thought, first thing day correct. one. Yeah, and that was all about specialty threads. And that's that was another one of those things where it's like <laughs> you kind of have the spoonful of sugar, which is uh, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make a fuzzy animal or a cool treatment with some big threads or work on some cool metallic threads. But you know that spoonful of sugar was the way I also delivered. These are the measurements that allow you to use any thread if you learn how to you know, deal with what thickness it is sure. and shortest stitches and longest stitches. And at the end of it, I once again hammered on business saying, Hey guys, <laughs> different, the way you stand out. And if you actually, here's the big takeaway. If you're willing to do something that your competition will not do or cannot do that adds either actual or perceived value to your product, you're going to win. And for me, that was like, Oh yeah, especially threads. If you make a cool creative version of a design that your, your uh, com competition is not doing, you're going to win. And on top of it, even if it's not your bread and butter, yeah, people are going to see that sample, consider you as a creative solution provider and say, yeah, this is the kind of person I want to work with and still do really regular jobs with you. You know, I think that's really how that goes. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, with that, oh, I, I want to hear about what you did. It's yeah. Like you weren't educating. Here, yeah. And so. I'm, I'm having some fun here trying to, <laughs> as usual, I always want to do something Squirrel. a little bit crazy and chase the squirrel. Um, I also yes. want to give everybody the the feel of the yeah. decorators community booth here at some point. So oh, it's awesome. I'm going yeah. to uh, I'm going to work on that. But uh, let's uh, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll talk about what we talked about. But let's uh, check in with a few folks here. Absolutely, uh, it's comments. That's yeah. why we're live. <clears throat> All right, Joey DeWing. Good morning, Joe. Great to <laughs> have morning, you checking Joe. in again. Appreciate that. Uh, hopefully, everything's everything's going well. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm assuming Joe, you'll be out there in Atlantic City at the Impressions Expo there. So. Uh, Check that out. See us uh, out there for sure. Definitely. So, good morning, folks. Have a great day today from Lisa Shaw. So, good morning, Lisa. Lisa thank you so much. So, uh, Todd says, great advice. Nice. Even though he didn't type it in there, he meant to say, great advice, dash Batman. You know, uh, <laughs> I may not be the, the hero that you deserve, but <laughs> I might be the hero you need. Make some profits. Come on, people. So, Eric had some good things. Uh, he said in his Eric Friday, the take up, <laughs> the take -up um, yeah. I still cannot find a video on the fuzzy stuff. 
Yeah, fuzzy threads. There may not be a video out there yet. You know what? There is something out there from the good people at Madeira USA. If you look up thick threads, fuzzy threads with them, or their uh, Bermalana line, they do have videos out there you can study. So if you want to learn about that, they have it. But I I might be persuaded to, I don't know, get in front of a camera and try that out at some point, too. (laughs) I don't know, Eric. You don't normally like to. It's weird. Uh, Yeah, I hate it, really. I'm I'm super nervous. Yeah, yeah. So... (laughs) All right, so uh, yes. Todd says uh, uh, that would make Robin today. Oh, yeah. That no. would make you Robin today, I believe. Uh, no. Yeah. I think you need a camera on that couch to watch people get off of it. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's, that's what we've warned people. They've come over. You know, everybody wants to feel it and squish it, and it's yes. been a big hit. Yeah. But uh, we're like, oh, yeah. And they're like, is it comfortable? I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, super it comfortable. Just, uh, you know, be prepared that getting out of it is not easy. <laughs> For those of you who don't already know, in the Decorators Community booth, we have a nice, big, inflatable couch. Yep. It is super plush. But, yeah, believe me, it is uh, hard to get out of for some folks. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. But it yeah. is a nice place to break. Good, good. Well, as we get along here, I'm going to actually try to get my phone into the feed. Oh, right on. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. If we may have feedback. It may be awful. But, hey. If you're not trying new things, if you're not making mistakes, you're not growing and learning, right? So. Listen, listen to this guy. He knows some stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we get an opportunity to try fun things, do things yeah. like this. So, yeah, um, my seminar yesterday happened at about uh, 1230, and right. uh, it was talking about e-commerce, what works and what didn't. And I've been super blessed to uh, have an amazing wife who is willing to be my guinea pig, uh, listen to me for some odd reason, you know, all of those <laughs> crazy things. and. And I basically got to tell the story of her going from a vocational re- rehab counselor yeah. into the clear path from from helping veterans figure out their careers into starting an e-commerce site selling personalized products. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, that's yeah, just, just a clear, clear path, path, right? That's right. No, I mean, just through. like all of us in this industry, not not a one of us has ever slid in sideways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, yeah. burning you, the your, whole way. Uh, your background did, did not scream embroidery digitizing. I do not believe. No, no. Uh, <laughs> usually, when you're translating Beowulf and learning to be a medievalist, you're probably not thinking direct to garment decoration, but it really works well. I'm gonna say. So if you're if you're trying that out, you know, medieval studies. Right to garment decoration. Yeah, for a yeah perfect path. Definitely. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So we've got we've got this uh, posted all over the place here, guys. So depending yeah. on where you're catching it from, you might not be seeing all the comments. So I'm going to do a better job of actually posting them on the video here all as right. we go along too. So um, let's see here. Uh, so Cindy says like I that. cannot find much on their site. Okay. So, you know what? Later on, I will jump back in the comments. Uh, and w- like we said, we're in comments all over the place. Yep. So you may have to chase us down a little bit, but yep. I'll try and reply to your comment and let you know where the thick thread stuff is. Sounds at. good. Sounds good. Um, Janessa, hey. hey. Thanks guys. for tuning, us, tuning in. <laughs> hey, Janessa. Todd says the panel you did was amazing. Great job. So yeah, awesome. we're really excited yeah. actually that we're going to do it again today. We are. Yeah. Um, and this guy right here is going to be one of the experts that you will be asking. So. I, yeah. I think this is going to be really interesting. So yesterday, uh, we had an amazing panel. We had really, uh, Brett really. from Caesar. Yeah. We had uh, Jenna Sackett from Stalls. Yeah. We had Matt Vasallo from the Rhinestone World. Yeah. And uh, Joseph Eric from the Magic Touch popped in. He's a one-man show over there in his booth. So yeah, was... um, he couldn't uh, he couldn't be there for the entire hour Super and a half. Cool but uh, really awesome. I mean, I know that takes away. You know, they they spend money to come and be they here. Yeah. And and while. The great part about industry, they're they're all educators, sure, but they also still need to earn a living, you know. <laughs> uh, so he 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 took time away to uh, to go do that. So it was was really amazing. Go check that out over at tworegularguys.com. Absolutely, See, right up there, <laughs> <laughs> right above us. But yeah, uh, I mean, can you imagine any other place where you're going to see? Those four people from those four companies all together willing to answer questions. It was awesome. It was yeah. a really way to, to a great way for people to get introduced to things. And we had people from every camp. You know how we all have our little tribes. Yep. We had some Stalls tribe people. We had yep. TRW up front. We had you know, everybody's tribe showed up to ask questions. It was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And yeah, and and I know Matt was actually streaming to his. You know, yes, and, was, and yeah. Matt obviously brings the heat. Unfortunately, Always. it was the we were having some. Not sound problems, but it wasn't as great as we would have liked. And so I don't think the folks tuning in on his channel could really hear it all that well. Oh, yeah. uh, we were trying to get people over to the two regular guys Facebook page to uh, yeah. 
Because, yeah. you know, we were miking that stuff in and, and you could hear it. So easier to do. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. Hey, so, learning experience. Once yep. again, guys, if you're trying something out, it's well worth it to go ahead and give it a shot. See what happens, because sometimes yep. that's the only way you really advance. And that's but look at the kind of cool things that can come out of it. when yep. you do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you got to eat these mics. So All right. Just, I'll, just get on, I'll get on top. Of <laughs> All right. Mike Heidi to the hand, Mike. <laughs> Heidi, good morning. Thank you for joining good morning, us. Heidi. Um, Lisa says Cindy search uh, and I'm. Belaine, yeah, thank Belaine you. thread thank as you. well. <laughs> Absolutely, Belaine from Good Old Sulky. That's 100% acrylic, fuzzy, 12 weight thread. It works very well. Also, Bermelana, Bermelana Co. Nice, there you go, guys. nice. And Lori said, uh, I really enjoyed the panel, so thank you nice. for that thank feedback, you, Lori. Lori. And uh, Heidi says, love the panel, need that at Chicago. And absolutely, it will be at Chicago. It will also be, good yes. morning, how are you? Um, it, it will be at Minnesota. Yeah. Same, same setup, uh, yeah. digital decorating on Friday. Uh, embroidery and screen prints on Saturday. Yeah. And uh, then it will also be at Tinley Park. So uh, really uh, appreciate uh, yeah, Scott and Margie nice. giving us that platform and allowing us to uh, try something fun and, and new. Well, yeah, and, uh, if you guys are wondering, is the DAX show worthwhile? You saw that panel. And that's just a tiny little section yeah. of everything that's going on here. It's yeah. absolutely worthwhile. Totally, totally. All right. Getting through here. And uh, <laughs> uh, yes. yes. We look at everybody oh, we go. Lisa's in. Thanks, Lisa. I sure will. Have you done a video on the fuzzy animals? The guys talking about offering the new and exciting things for your customers. So yeah, there you absolutely. go. And uh, Lisa says, yes, be posting first week of March. Nice. Cool. Nice. Um, oh, good. Thank you. Lisa. Okay, <laughs> cool. So everybody in the comments showing each other love. Absolutely. Get out there. Learn about new and interesting things because that helps your value. Yep, for sure. So, yes, uh, yesterday's uh, seminar was great. Hello. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Uh, yeah. it, it was really cool. It was an opportunity. And, and the thing I love about the seminars and, and what I really try to encourage is, is that we're all there, yeah. you know, so we actually had lots of opportunities to interact. It, it, people were sharing some of their successes and failures within e-commerce and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. So yesterday I got an opportunity to really share that information, talking about what worked and what didn't work, you know, finding ways to do new things, really trying to lay a foundation of how you should look at it and think about, you know, e-commerce as a different way of yeah. doing business too i mean it, it much like you asked me what was the thing that people had the hard questions about like what's the thing that they came back on or what caused the reaction yeah thing? well once you start getting into you know like you said the, the the softwares to use and then the apps to use and the, yeah. the nuts and bolts of it and, and i know people are, are hungry for that kind of information yeah. um but it, as we know, as you know, yeah, those are always so difficult because what's going to work for me might not work for you. And, and you, you know, because we're not all heading directly at the same path, yeah. you know, yeah. so you're going to have different, different things that work and don't work, you know, but we, uh, with my wife's business, we heart dot biz yeah. that that's on Shopify. So obviously yeah. that's where a lot of my experience is coming from. So we talked about the apps there. Um, but just some of the general things, I think some of the light bulbs that I saw go off as we were talking about, you know, what you do in the customer experience and, yeah, and how that's that's different. You know, I mean, you, you just can't. As as a small business owner, we're very passionate about what we do. Good morning. Yes. Uh, and therefore, we need to do things that well, we don't need to. What happens is somebody gives us negative feedback or somebody yeah, says we didn't yeah. do what we said we we're going to do or somebody's expectations weren't met. Well, we take that personally. Of course. And and our human instinct is to react and be defensive and, you know, yeah. dukes up, go to battle, you know, and, and in e-commerce, it just it can't be that way. Not at all. Um, no. it, it just can't be that way. So, uh, you know, you got to sometimes just grin and bear it, do what they want you to do and then and then move on. And then, you know, my my point was when you're pricing your products, yeah. realize that those things are going to happen. So yeah. at least if you're making money making more money because yes. you're able to cover things like that it, the the pride part still hurts but Surely. at least the Surely. cost part doesn't hurt you know <laughs> <laughs> and so it makes it a lot easier to swallow yeah and then take that experience and learn from it too because really what that boils down to is yeah some people are just a little bit ridiculous and that's okay of course that's but, gonna happen but their expectations weren't met Oh, and honestly, having done e-commerce for a very long time, uh, there is a, a certain percentage of people that will not be pleased. 
they will not be yeah. pleased. And there's nothing you can do about yeah. that. And that's also not a problem. That is just the truth of how it's going to be. And also, you know, it makes you think of yep. on the tubular guys recently, we had Jay Bear on yeah. who discussed his book, uh, Hug Your Haters. Hug Your Haters, yep. And, he, and this is something I took from him. And honestly, it's something I've thought before, but him kind of crystallizing it got it into my head pretty hard, yeah. which is you can't just think you have an answer. You've got the right way to go and ignore all the negative feedback. You yeah. take the negative feedback in, don't react to it. You don't become emotional about it. But you do look at it and see if there are trends, see if there are things yep. you really can improve. Also, there are some times where even if the thing that's happening is something you feel like, you know, it's not really something that's my fault. Yeah. If you can communicate better with a customer, there's no reason not to communicate better with the customer. Exactly. There's no reason not to prevent problems before they happen, even if what you would like to say, and I, I hope no customers <laughs> are hearing this, is, oh, my customer did something stupid. Yeah, exactly. Even if they did, it's still our responsibility to communicate that to them and to try and make that not happen, even for people who might not get how everything works. Correct. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that that's that was the fun part about it. I mean, obviously, lots of great interaction. Uh, we talked yeah. a lot about shipping. Shipping is uh, one of those things that, you know, and, and I didn't really realize this until I had an opportunity to talk to some more of these folks that it made a lot of sense once they finally started asking a lot of questions about it, because it's like, yeah, traditionally, we're delivering things. We're, we're yeah, going yeah. local and things like that. So once you start to get into e-commerce, then then you're dealing with a whole new animal. You're you're doing things where, yeah, I've got to ship something. And why while that may sound a little bit easy, when when uh, USPS crushes your you know fifty yeah, dollar no, item true. or you know sends the packing slip only because the bag came open or you know whatever, how do you deal with that? But then how do you not make it you know? cost you twelve dollars every time you ship sure. something and also how do you not make it not cost that kind of goodwill with the customer because sure. even if it's not your fault that really isn't that's still part of the experience you have to deal with it Correct. doesn't matter whose fault it is Correct. Yeah. because once the customer opens the box and i know you guys who do sublimation have it the worst you have to send <laughs> mugs and i've done this to get some sublimation anytime you have to send ceramic mugs i'm sorry that sucks yeah <laughs> that's definitely. just hard definitely but yeah it's still part of that experience that you have to deliver one way or the other correct correct yeah. And and I was talking to uh, one gentleman after the class, and yeah, yeah. and he said uh, he sells on Amazon already, and and yeah, he he said really the only negative reviews he's ever gotten were when things got there damaged. Yeah, and it's like yeah. it's so hard because that wasn't your fault necessarily, and so he was like, you know, what can I do for packaging? And I said, yeah. well, you got to find that happy medium because at, at a certain time, if they run over it with a truck, it doesn't matter what box you put it in. <laughs> <laughs> this may be true. And the, and the more box you get, the more expensive it's going to be to ship and yada, yada, well, yada. And you yada, end up so. passing that on to your customer or ha are not being as competitive that way. But at the same yep. time, yeah, you have to have some kind of a decent experience. I know the same things so have sold on Amazon myself quite a bit. Yep. And it's surprising what small flaws in packaging and presentation will cause somebody to think something is used or damaged sure. or not want to pay for it. Absolutely. It's really amazing. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I look at it this way and, and you're exactly right. You know, if, if that thing shows up and it's well put together, it looks like somebody, you know, took some time that, yeah, you know, yeah. it's got good packaging, you know, it's in, in a, a decent package, and, you know, it looks good when they open it up, they're already impressed and, yes. and, and, yeah. and they haven't even seen the product yet. And so what happens is they're like, okay, cool. It's awesome. And, yeah. and they, they start at that point. But if it shows up, wadded in a bag, you know, a used box or, or, or whatever the case may sure, be, sure. immediately their expectations are that this thing is going to have flaws. So yeah. they're going to take they're the product the out. Flaws. They're yeah. going to nitpick the thing to death. Yep. And 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 all you had to do was put it in some decent packaging. Yeah, packaging <laughs> matters. No, it's uh, whenever I taught my pricing classes. Last year I taught pricing classes at uh, Impressions Expo. Well, I guess ISS at the time. Yeah. And one of the big things was I showed them this blank shirt, and all the processes we did with this blank shirt were to remove the tags and do a printed custom tag. Yep. And it, this blank shirt went from a six dollar thing we would sell to somebody to our final customer was selling them for sixty dollars. Sure. It was the association with other other goods. Yep. It was the packaging. It had a beautiful little bag that looked like a leather bag with a yep. oil seal on it. Yep. And so for the grand total of you know cents, less than a dollar, <laughs> they were adding 10x profit on everything. Yep. So totally. packaging totally matters. Presentation totally matters. Exactly. You can't ignore it. Exactly. All right. Let's catch a couple comments here. And Lisa, we appreciate the feedback. That The sound is good. So hey. Awesome. Hey, man. Cheers. Doing but good on the go mixer. The mic. Yeah, it well, sounds no. really bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When people ask why should I go to a trade show, you guys are rocking the reason why. Thank you, Thank Lisa. You, Lisa. Yeah. 
<laughs> and and Lisa, just to that point though, I mean, this you know, yeah, I wish awesome you guys could see all of it and, right and, now. We yeah. don't have it all to show you, but I mean, there yeah. is just a buzz of energy on the floor. People totally. are walking around, and there are awesome displays everywhere. Yep. So, yeah, this is just the, like I said, the tiniest piece of what this is. Correct, correct. And then as we were talking about the feedback portion, you know, yeah. always something to learn from feedback, and true, and, true, and that is the key, Sheila, is that if if you can always take something out of that feedback then it doesn't matter how hard you failed yeah it's yeah. still valuable absolutely so no, it's a lesson that, and if you can't cool. take failure as a lesson you're going to have a hard time in this industry yep exactly so ron says important to listen before you reply to their concerns that's yeah that's a really that's good a tip ron one. ron because what yeah i think again as humans our nature is to get defensive yeah and that defensiveness just kind of closes us off now we're narrowly focused on defending ourselves well yeah but if you can stop listen a lot of times that's all the customer wants is they just want you, they want to be heard and feel like you actually care about what they're saying. Absolutely. Even yeah. when there's not a solution to give somebody, listening does help. I mean, yep. it really is true. Totally. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. I usually vent, but then I'm going to do the right thing for the customer, <laughs> Sandy Tolley. This is and, why we have communities of yeah, just exactly, decorators so exactly. we can do that. That's yeah. all right. You yeah. vent behind the scenes, sure. come back out from the doors, you know, yeah. like back behind the counter, yeah. and how can we help? Yeah. You? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my poor wife has heard a lot of venting over the years. <laughs> I think everybody's significant others, uh, uh, pets and otherwise, have a, yeah, <laughs> exactly. to hear all that venting. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, listening is an important skill. Absolutely. Uh, Chuck, thanks for joining us this hey, morning. Good morning, Chuck. And uh, he followed that up with first impressions mean a lot. So uh, yeah, no, great. customer facing spaces if you have them, but that's the same for e-commerce. The way that yep. your branding looks is really important because exactly. you do have to look professional. Yep. yep. Good morning, Scott. Yeah, good morning, Scott. Great show, <laughs> sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Ritter just walked by, so that yes, was sir. that was cool. Um, Absolutely. All right. So uh, Jan says, well said, Eric, not to react, but to embrace all comments from customers was a hard lesson to learn, but well worth the lesson. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it is. And also, it also doesn't mean that there aren't unreasonable customers, but there's sure. a good chance that an unreasonable customer has still attached to something that's actually wrong in your chain. Oh, I mean, boy. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I was reading ahead here. All right. Cindy says, we are in a pickle right now. Our customer gave us an order late last night. They leave for a basketball playoff early Tuesday morning. Now we have to figure out how to round up some t-shirts that we don't have in stock. We live in the middle of nowhere. We can't run to our vendor or pick some up. They are all six plus hours away. Oh, boy. Overnight shipping. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like. But then if they're leaving on Tuesday morning, oh, crap. Yeah, that's really tough, guys. Mm. I don't know. That's one of those times right. where you have to have a, a backup solution. But the chances are is it's not going to be everything they want. But then they have to understand that if they bring those late orders, you yep. have to communicate that stuff ahead of time. Yep, yep, Clear exactly. communication yep. from the moment this stuff comes up is yeah. expectations. Critical. Yep. Managing expectations. Telling have, the truth early. Yes. Yep. Have you ever done a seminar where you don't talk about kind of mitigating customer expectations? Because I don't think I have. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Cindy, right now we're not a whole lot of help. So if any of the listeners have any suggestions or ideas, Let's, uh, yeah, let's yeah. make that happen. If you happen. have a lot of stock of shirts and you're right next to Cindy, uh, yeah. you might be making a friend today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I think the best thing about smaller shows is the networking and it's easier to communicate with the vendors. Yeah, feels absolutely. like they want to help you, not sell you. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's been really impressive about everything I've seen here at the DAX. So I, I mean, in our industry in general, I, I feel pretty proud Surely. to be part of a group of folks that we don't have a lot of those hard sell, you know, no, uh, make mean, you feel dirty kind of folks. You know, we, we may decide one more time to tease Terry Combs about being a uh, predatory, predatory salesman. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but he's not. And the people who are out here are not. And yeah, in fact, fine. by and large, morning, everything Kevin. I see is people who are trying to help people out. That really seems like the biggest thing. Everybody is out here trying to help people out. And I don't hear the hard sales pitch. I hear people saying, what problem can I solve for you? Correct. And that's something I would love yeah. all of you guys to say to your customers. Not just how do I get you a shirt, but yep. what are you trying to do? Yeah, here's what my price. Can I solve for you? It, the the price should be something that yeah is actually if if done really well. Yes, the price comes up after you've delivered. Like, okay, how much do I owe you? Yeah, <laughs> and no, then they're happily no. glad to pay whatever price to tell them. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're, and also I'd like you all to be trusted as solutions providers and not commodity decorators. I mean. Uh -huh. I know I say this a million times, it being like a monolith box where money comes in and shirts or mugs or anything sure. comes out the other side is not where it's, where it's at. Yeah. I mean, eventually you can be replaced by any other commodity. Correct. Correct. So, yeah, you got to be good. more than that. That's good. All right. Uh, let's see here. 
Cindy, oh boy, it gets it gets better. <laughs> of course, the person will not tell the team slash parents that she didn't get the order in on time will be the bad guy. Oh, that's not good. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's such a yeah, rough position again, to be I'm, in, guys. I'm, yeah, obviously not knowing all of the details, I think uh, I may have turned that one away to start with. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> honestly, that, that's the <laughs> but hard I know part. that's not always an op option either. No, so especially again, if you are somewhere where you're in a small town, you're the only decorator, or maybe one of a couple decorators, it's sure. hard not to do that bounce back and forth when there are problems. Yep, exactly. For sure. All right. I am going to get this phone thing figured out. <laughs> so bear with me. All right. So that sure. was my e-commerce. Then awesome, man. Have you, did you do an, so you do three here? Or I just, just did two. two. Okay. I'm just doing right. two this year. Uh, this year at Dax, there's only two because I have the, the first one that I told you guys about is yeah. just like three and a half hours long. <laughs> so yeah, I do two seminars, but the first one's the big workshop. So it's it's still plenty of content I got to come up with for that time at Dax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so then yes. yesterday afternoon, we uh, forced the, the take up to uh, be a, <laughs> a, a different time, be much shorter than uh, everybody you know, wanted. My so, inability to schedule force the take up to be that way. <laughs> time zones are tough, Eric. Time zones are tough. <laughs> Especially when you, you're dealing with somebody like Terry who lives in Arizona. It just yeah. screws up all time zones because they're, they never are in the same time zone. To, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, every time I have to deal with trying to figure out when Terry is. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not great at time anyway. Yeah. My, my wife will tell you that um, the calendar and the clock to me are abstract <laughs> objects that I kind of look at when I must. Yeah. And most people have to hound me for all the gotcha. things I need to do. So, which so, this man knows. So, <laughs> so are you like me where you're a, uh, t what I would, I, I heard this term and I've kept it and I'm, I'm yeah, owning yeah. it now. Time optimist. Oh yes. I am absolutely a time optimist. I believe there's always enough time for anything I think I can do. Just like, if I have the skills. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm like, I'm sure I'll find that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure, I, I I'll don't take always on that find project. that time. So that's <laughs> also, I hate to say this, when everybody says, oh, you really answer everybody's email, I say, I answer it. I'm not going to tell you when I answer it. Yeah, especially exactly. sometimes, I hate to say, uh, the one other thing you get from coming to one of my seminars is I give you an email address and tell you the magic word to put in your subject line to make it go to the top of my inbox. Well, <laughs> just amongst friends, Eric, what is that magic word? You just have to say you're in the seminar. <laughs> and even oh. if you weren't in the seminar, I'll probably believe you and I'll answer your question first. So <laughs> nice, <laughs> just nice. say you came to the show and right. saw me and I'll believe you and I'll fix something for you. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's hard. the, uh, that's a fun, fun, uh, yeah. Fun way to go. Scheduling is your yes. best friend with email. Cause yeah, yeah. the, the 2am emails, Somehow the people get them the next morning at 9 a.m. It's, it's, yeah. it's weird. It's like I get everything done at 9 a.m. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm not good for that. I'm not good for that all yeah. the time. I don't do these things. Yeah. <laughs> you would right. think that I would use technology to my advantage, but I, uh, I don't always. Yeah, for sure. All right. A couple more comments here. And then uh, I think I'm getting close to being able to get this phone thing going. So we'll try that out. There we go. Um, I may be sewing T-shirts myself. Okay. <laughs> hey, Cindy, creative outside of the box idea. I like it. There you go. Um, start sure. by telling them that. It's probably not something you can do and then explain what you can do. Yeah. That's good, Never say no. Point. Say this is what I can do. That's what I always say to people. If you if you come up to that, start with that. You don't start with the negative. Yep. Hit them with, you know, what we can do is this. Exactly. I, I always give them a way out. Give them a window when you close the door. Correct. Correct. Always. Correct. And then uh, Martha says to Todd's point, starting out in the business as home based is daunting and lonely. The yeah. small shows allow yeah. you, encourage you, motivate you to become part of the tribe, if you will. Yeah, the networking is so totally worth it, and suddenly you realize you're not alone in this. Absolutely, yeah, and point. Dax is a really friendly place to get that going. Honestly, a lot of people who feel a little worried about larger shows come to this show. It's really comfortable, and it, it's yeah. a it's a definitely a tribe feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Jan says, "Yeah, yeah. absolutely, have it. <laughs> Enjoy." <laughs> We're offering everybody couch yeah, services. Keep, as yeah. You can see. <laughs> After day two, they've spent some time on their feet. Just come in, sit down. That's the whole point. It's a, a lounge to hang out. So. We even got a charging station over there, so we we'll, do. We we'll, do. We'll get we'll get over there. I, I, like I said, I think I'm close here. <laughs> so Jan says, "This is where I would say, please provide the shirts." So sorry, Cindy, sending you good vibes. See, look, you're not alone. We've all done this, <laughs> and people are there with you. Y'all are making doing paperwork fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Glad to hear it. Never say no to money. All right, there we go. So Todd's got a question for us. Okay, how did you get into the seminar circuit, Eric? Okay. Go ahead. How did I get into the seminar circuit? Honestly, by writing. Uh, for me, I started writing, honestly, God, it's a long time ago, and I don't want to say this. I started writing a <laughs> blog for Stitches Magazine, now defunct entirely, uh, and Stitches Magazine had me do that in 2006. Now, the other thing is, the way I got to that blog was by entering digitizing contests and showing my work. 
So the more I showed my work, people were interested in the work that I was doing. I won some contests. I got a uh, golden needle where I won the, the overall on that. And when they saw that I could write, when I could communicate, express myself, they said, you want to do a blog for us? And I did. So blogging and then to writing for the magazines. And of course, as we all know, uh, magazines largely are operated by people who are also offering these trade shows. That's what they do. So the magazines to the trade shows was a pretty natural experience. And uh, <laughs> really, that's how I got into the seminar circuit. So if, you, if, if that's where you're wondering how people get to speak, it's, uh, well, it's like I always say, though, it's uh, the 10 year overnight success. Uh, I wrote for free for years, and eventually someone said, you know what, we really want Eric to be out here teaching. And I'll be honest, I also stayed chained to my desk for like 13 years at my yep. current shop that I was at at that point, and I just wrote, and I didn't get out. Yep. But as soon as I said, yes, I can come out again, because I had already had that big backlog of content and people who wanted yep. to see me, it was game on. Everybody wanted me to go to the seminar circuit. Totally. So that's how it started for me. Yep. I mean, how did you get started? Well, um, it actually uh two regular guys podcast is where go. where i was able to uh you know get in front of people I, I was i was lucky to get into the industry with uh, yeah. uh working for scott fresner over at us screen yeah and uh scott obviously was fairly plugged in and and uh, in fact early on in my career scott couldn't actually do a seminar that he was presenting so i stood in for him a couple times oh, okay. that was that was daunting and, and nerve wracking to uh, try to teach Photoshop when I didn't know Photoshop like Scott did. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, and uh, trial by fire. Yeah. So, you know, two regular guys helped a lot. I, I think, though, you know, you you were writing. I was podcasting. Yeah. And, and it is just a, a matter of uh, just getting out there and, and yeah. doing it and being in front of people and don't be afraid to ask You know, every every season all of the shows put out a call for presenters they do and this is true. um you know you need to do some research do some homework and make sure that you put together a presentation because here's what i've been telling people in in my classes uh yeah. lately is that regardless of what you think about your own abilities you have an expertise you have something yes. that you are better than everybody else at mm -hmm. um and and that is shareable you know yeah. and and even if you don't think it's because a lot of times the things that we're good at, because we're good at it, we don't see them as a big deal. Where other people will look at you and go, "Wow, I can't believe you can do that." You know, yeah. you you digitize, and you know, you're probably like, "Yeah, it's just common." You know, this is what I do. Yeah, quite but, often. But quite being often. able to then get out there and share that, people go, "Wow, that's amazing." Well, and what I would say to everybody here, um, the path is always to show your work, show the kind of work you want to do, because people, I hate to say this, but whether it's our customers whether it's somebody on the show circuit, sure. whether it's magazines, people want to bet on a known quantity. Sure. And if you are out there showing work and they can trust that work, whether that's writing, whether that's podcasting, whether that's videos on TikTok, sure. whatever it is <laughs> that you do that shows what you can do and what you want to do, you become known for it by showing it. You have to actually get out there and do it first. And it also means you can't always look for a safe entry. You have to jump out there. Um, that's yep. that's just this, the, the sad truth. Sure. I was not always good. Everybody says like, oh, Eric, you get in front of a camera. Uh, these guys will tell you I'm nervous. I get nervous when I go to my show yep. and when I go to do my classes. Um, it, it's not that you can't do this if you're not. And if you're an introvert or if you're a nervous person, sure. you do have to get out there and do it. But at the same time, you'll find on the other side that there's so much available to you um, that it's I, I think it's entirely worthwhile to yep. show that work yep. and you don't always have to put yourself personally out there to put your work out there exactly exactly yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's a great point I uh, one of the my favorite things that uh, comes up a lot when when I'm uh, interacting with the folks that are part of the success principles of Jack Canfield yeah, stuff that yeah, I do yeah. is that uh, everything you want is right on the other side of fear everything absolutely so absolutely. if you can get over that fear part and get to it and put yourself out there like you said yeah, there's going to be times where you fall flat on your face. And it's going to sure. hurt badly. Heck, oh, we, yeah. We we pretty much do that on a weekly basis. Two regular guys. <laughs> hey, let's try something new. <laughs> yeah, right. We do it all the time. <laughs> hey, hey, let's let's go to, you know, three different shows back to back. And at the same time, try to do a decorators community booth at the same time, trying to do a panel. Oh, and three yeah. shows and sure. or yeah. three seminars or two seminars. Sure. Basically two and a half. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> um, you know, Terry's doing a seminar right now. Yeah. I, I did a seminar. You just pack it all in there. But you know what? That's yeah. the only way that we've been able to. For me, that's how yeah. I've been able to meet all of these cool people that I get to interact with now. You know, uh, I am honored to call somebody like Matt Pasalo a friend. And, yeah, and we've for got sure. Clay from Corel Trainer next Absolutely. to us. And, 
and Eric Campbell and, and all of these folks that, you know, we just, they're good people and we just want to help each other out. Well, so and also really on, the, on the other side of that, when you, any one of you, if you step out today and put yourself out there, you are ahead of 95% of the population that's just consuming things yep. and waiting for something to happen. You will be ahead of the game the moment you step to the other side yep. of that barrier. Yep. And honestly, you'll meet more people like us and everybody else mm -hmm. on the other side. Exactly. Yep. yep. Ron says in years of Toastmasters. Yeah. Ron I've not done. Awesome. Yeah. Ron is fantastic. Ron is awesome. But um, I've not actually done Toastmasters. No, I've heard a ton either. about it. I kind of did it my on my own and yeah, just made yeah. a podcast every week that <laughs> <laughs> no, same be, here became my Toastmaster. But I will say, uh, Ron is such a natural speaker when he comes to talk to you. He's so good at doing this yeah. that I'm like, maybe listen to Ron because he's really good yeah, at just exactly. jumping out and making exactly. friends. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Jan, enjoy the uh, Little League shirts. Uh, I'm glad you love your job. But yes. thanks for checking in here this morning. Thank and, you for joining uh, us, Jan. Wade, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Hi, here. Wade. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Tom says, that's the hard part, taking your experience of 40 years and explaining it to someone uh, who just got the machine. Both are doing a great job. Oh, you both are doing a great job. Thank oh, you, Tom. Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah, and, it, yeah absolutely. It, and, and for all of you guys, you know, it can be that same way. You know, I ask, ask my wife. I've forced her into doing a, a Facebook Live and, and, you know, she just, but once she started doing it, you can just sense that every time she gets a little bit better. It feels a little bit more natural. Absolutely. And and she's got stuff to share. I mean, she is the the nicest person I know, and she shares that, and she shares her ability to keep maintain that bubbly personality and that that uh, niceness all the time, even when she's dealing with a jerk like me. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a jerk. Yeah. But I'm going to say for Tom, I, and Tom, who's been doing some embroidery consulting, he has a ton of experience. I think the great thing is people like us who have that experience, when we start to interact with people who don't, yeah, we get new perspectives. I mean, we learn as much every time we go out to teach a seminar yep. as we're teaching. Yep. I think that's true. You just learn as much from other people's perspectives. So that's the other benefit of getting out there exactly. is learning from the other people. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Sheila says, yes, my favorite saying. Everything's right, on the Sheila. other side. Fear. Alan, good to see you. I know you rock started out of here already, Alan, but uh, I know. thanks for joining Alan us yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, we get that power handshake meeting with Alan Howe yeah, real exactly. quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're such a rock star like Alan, you you, you know, you just you have roll to in, roll out. You have to get as much Alan time as you can in the little <laughs> bursts. So, um, Ron practice makes perfect. Absolutely, Absolutely Ron. Man, that's yeah. a uh, good, good morning, morning, Eric. And, uh, Connie, good morning, good morning. Connie. Um, Thank you for joining in. Okay, Todd says it's weird. Lives don't bother me much. It's the recorded re recorded stuff. I need a thousand <laughs> takes on. <laughs> All right, Todd, man, yeah. man, Todd. Once again, you're somebody who seems really natural on camera. So I bet you, just the way that they tell me that stuff, you probably feel like, yeah, but I did a thousand takes on that recorded thing. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's it, it is. It just everybody has the thing that gets yep. to them. Everybody yep. has that for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so. Like I said, you kind of had to shorten the take up yesterday. Sure, what, what sure. were you guys talking about? Because I'm actually going to take this opportunity. Got the phone here. Going to jump yeah. up. All right. Let you chat for a second. And you then got it. We'll, we'll do the quick mobile view as well. So if you want to, when you're ready, you can just uh, give right. me the high sign. Yeah, I'm going to set this I'll down. I'll click you over as soon as you jump in. All right. So <laughs> what I will do is chat for a second about what was going on. Um, the take up, usually I don't go this hard into the topics that I'm already talking about, but the take up was really on show stuff. And it was about getting out to the shows and about value. If you hear anything from all of us is that value is important and you are going to need to deal not only with actual value, but customer value, but perceived value. And so that's really what we talked about. Now, I'm going to jump in and bring in Aaron's mobile view so we can show you the booth. All right. So let's see if we can jump that in. There's Aaron on the mobile view. There we go. Screen. So let me see. I yeah, you can see wanna... Decorator's Community booth. And there is the uh, famous couch there, now. There's the couch. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Central sign supply right here. Right. <laughs> Check them out. we got to go see what they've got going on here real quick. So here you guys go. can watch Aaron with the mobile there view. There you go. The, and the close-up. <laughs> How's it going, Lee? You're ready There's... for your close-up. We didn't give you the the heads up, but Lee's Aaron been a great McGovern. neighbor. He's uh, allowed our couch to push into his booth sometimes. So <laughs> you're welcome to come, you know, relax on it anytime. <laughs> All right. So there you are. Yeah. So yeah, got got the couch here, and we've got some wonderful ottomans and things to sit on, and then a little cube display area, and uh, we've even set up. Oh, there we go. We've even set up like a little charging station. So yeah, it, you know, some some fun, and then back over here, and here's Eric. 
And that's how and it looks then, from the uh, back side. Let's, here, let's go join. Let, look at the, <laughs> try not to get feedback over here. <laughs> so yeah, there, there we, we are. And there, there's our, our setup. And I'm now, this is exactly what you guys are seeing from Eric's view. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, we have to put a little bit of production value into it. it. And Aaron has been awesome at figuring all of this stuff out. And he takes on all of this gear and difficulty for himself. This this would actually be fun to go and do a, a walk around. I don't know how far this mic would work, but yeah, uh, right. Huh? I just got a new idea, Eric. <laughs> He's looking at me like, "Don't, no, don't do this it." This is gonna make me. <laughs> Anyhow, we're, we're looking over here at uh, CorelTrainer.com, yep. and uh, they're checking some things out and fantastic uh, software educating. piece. Yep. All right. Well, I think uh, here we'll just kind of. But you can see the show. See, see this show. is all the excitement and there are rows and rows of awesome things going on here so if you're wondering if dax is great dax is great yep folks over here at uh web store simple i believe yep there we go web store simple right here caddy corner from us so again blessed to uh have some great neighbors here eric <laughs> yeah we have great neighbors all around us and we are just past the corner from the awesome folks at the rhinestone world and you can see them right across the way. So if you've ever seen the awesome TRW videos, well, that is where it's going on right now. All right. <laughs> there we go. And got some oaky printers. All right, Eric, I'm coming back. So, so you want to come on back, man. <laughs> I think right you ran the... down a squirrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. You take me out of there. And... <laughs> All right, guys. So that was just kind of a little mobile view of going on. You're not just <laughs> in the I, back corner. With did us. I make anybody sick? <laughs> <laughs> the shaky cam version i should have brought the gimbal and whatever but but hey you know that's that's a little bit of what's going on you can get kind of get the energy of what's happening with that sure <laughs> all right let's so see if there's any more good comments yeah right? definitely so uh, it, there there are some here we go home at midnight leaving for thread x in the morning so we'll see you, see out, you there, out there alan that's uh, exciting so yeah we'll see you there yes uh, that is one thing that's great about modern technology. If you can't go to a trade show, lots of YouTube. <laughs> Absolutely true. And we're happy to bring it to you. Yep. And uh, Alan says the Merv Griffin couch. I, yes, yeah, I know. Awesome. We should have been doing interviews over there. I never yeah. thought about that. We could uh, walk people on when they had a good yeah. set. <laughs> I, I certainly did think about it. But uh, when, uh, when the people complaining about getting out of it started happening i was like yeah that yeah, would no. piss off our guests there is no graceful <laughs> way to exit an inflatable no, couch no. no cindy says where's the snacks yeah that's a good point we, should, we definitely should have uh, gotten some snacks true true i like mean a you plate know. of chicken wings at least <laughs> not like you guys have enough chicken that's wings true. We in have the last few yeah. days now i know how to do multi-cam during a live you're teaching and didn't even know it awesome todd it just you know it just happens naturally. This man teaches all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. He educates uh, as he breathes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Jane says, great show. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Love the behind the scenes. Awesome. Happy to do it. Awesome. Yep. Very cool. Um, yeah. It, you may have to figure this out because, again, I don't know how far this will go. Yeah. We can plug in the mics because we've done that before, and that's oh, been yeah, fun. We but, have done that um, before. And if nothing else, walking the aisles is sometimes yeah. fun just to see what's up. Uh, let's see here. Oh, hi, TRW. Absolutely. <laughs> Enjoyed the mobile view. Sorry, Very sorry, cool. it was a little shaky from time to time. <laughs> I, I was again chasing squirrels as per usual. <laughs> there you go. This is 100 yeah. percent true, Todd. 100 yeah, percent true. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you know, I think we all go off on tangents. I tend to talk too much, but is this, but he tends to run around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I honestly think that Eric and Terry might enjoy this just for the entertainment value, though. So We don't really want to hurt you, though, man. I mean, <laughs> I think a it's a little shock. too much. A little shock. It looks fun. I haven't been to Dax. Yep. Dax is absolutely worthwhile. You really just, yeah, you definitely. The Kansas City one. Chicago is going to be a great show. So it's, oh, yeah, it's uh, just as near me in uh, Troy, Missouri. So, oh, okay. Um, they, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, if you Tinley can get Park. up to the Tinley Park event. that's Tinley a, Park event is always great, and it's got a great venue as well. Yep. Cindy, make a valid point. Uh, you could, I, I did. I did try to get the taffies out of the the tins that my wife has, but uh, she didn't want me to buy them, so I, I didn't uh, didn't do that. Oh well. All right. So did you did you cover the take up a little bit? What, uh, I, what I stammered while you were looking for the <laughs> for where you were going to be, but yeah, uh, what I'll say about the take up is this. Um, what I'd like you guys to know is I'm not running off to a new show. In fact, I'm hoping to we, get people like Aaron on the show, but it is a place where I can go deep on embroidery subjects. And so you're going to keep seeing that. And that's what I'm going to keep doing, you know, because not everybody here, 
I understand. Not everybody wants to talk about densities for fuzzy thread. And uh, I do. So, <laughs> so eventually we're going to talk about a lot of that heavy embroidery yeah. stuff and just some of the, honestly, some of the stuff that's really based in my experiences that doesn't always fit with what we're doing to regular guys because we want to be there for everybody. Yep. So that's, you know, there's going to be more of that on the take up. You're going to see a lot of deep embroidery and digitizing experience and knowledge. And I'm going to bring in some people that are uh, kind of historical to the embroidery world as well that may or may not fit with the current market what's going on now. So yep. th there's some stuff like that going on, but it's just adding more to the content. It's like small business Saturdays. Yep. It adds more to the discussion. Sure. And what we want to do is really, I would love someday to have all of our people that we know and love who yeah. make great content doing a show so that every day of the week you could be inspired. I would love to see that someday. There we go. So and then we'll do like a big panel that. discussion too. I'm yes. starting to really enjoy that too. Oh, so. the big panels are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I really like those. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Eric, what I know that we, yes, have enjoyed giving you a hard time about <laughs> taking off and doing your own show. I yeah, want to no. make sure that publicly I, I put out there that no, uh, this hundred percent support it. Yeah. think it's great. Uh, the more content, the better. Yes. And yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at the the logo on the side over here of decorators community, the, the abundance mentality. And yes. um, so now it wouldn't be Terry and I, if we didn't give you a hard time, that's just how we show that we love <laughs> this you. This is absolutely how we do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. exactly. So you've had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know if these guys are my best friends or they hate me. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> a little, yeah. little bump. A little bump. A little bump. So anyhow, all yeah. right, Eric, uh, all right. let's see here. We're, we're coming up. Yeah, we're just, just short of an hour. So, uh, I, I actually normally tried to keep small business Saturdays to 30 minutes, but there was so much fun going on that, uh, do you what have closing thoughts? I do. Man? I do have a closing thought. Well, I have a closing question. Oh, okay. All okay. right. So think about your experience at Dax, Kansas city in okay. its entirety here. Yeah. In start to finish. Okay. What is the number one takeaway that, that you have that you'd like to share with the, uh, the folks out there you know what i would say the number one takeaway has been that the people who are willing to put themselves out there uh -huh. are ahead of the game and this is whether you are putting yourself out there by taking a class by investing in your business yep. whether you're putting yourself out there by doing what matt vasallo did and making videos for five people until you get popular yeah that's the thing nobody talks about how long the success tale is it's long sometimes yep the people who are putting themselves out there by trying something new with techniques or trying something new in their businesses or putting yourselves out there by caring deeply for what your customer needs and caring for how their businesses run, yeah. what they can get from you and what you can do for them. Anybody who's putting themselves out there, not just consuming, not just doing the same old thing, you're ahead of the game the first step you take out of the door. And I saw that all over for the last couple of days. Wonderful. Perfect. That is great. That is a, a fantastic piece of advice. Let's just shut it down there because uh, All right. I think that's a mic dropper there, Eric. But All don't right, drop man. the mic, please. I, I, no, the mic's really nice. <laughs> I'm not going to drop it. I'll, I'll pretend drop it. Yeah, okay. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. A soft drop. <laughs> All right. Alan does say that Eric is the embroidery whisperer. So there we go. I'll take Point. it. We'll take I'll that. take it. Yeah, good. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to do a walk around. I'm not sure if we, we'll get to it, but... Uh, Make sure you get over to uh, Two Regular Guys Facebook Absolutely. page. Absolutely. And uh, at one o'clock, we'll have the live panel happening from over there. I'm going to actually try to get it scheduled right after this. And uh, that'll that'll wrap it up. And you'll be on an airplane and I will be packing up a blow up couch. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel bad about that. No, no, no. no, no yeah, no, guys. Good. So everybody who came in here from the take up, everybody from Small Business Saturday, Check each other's shows out. Check out two yep. regular guys. We all have this awesome content that's going to be inspirational for you. So check everything out and come to Dax if you haven't. Yep, that's outstanding. So we'll, we'll see you guys in Minnesota and see you guys in Chicago. And uh, Eric, have a great day.